Are you seeing this? I'm blasting enemies with a full auto laser while riding on the wing of an R-Wing. Yet another reason why Star Fox Assault for the GameCube is better than Star Fox 64. That's right, haters, I said it. This underrated and over-criticized Star Fox GameCube game is better than its N64 classic older brother. That being said, though, it's still not perfect. To be fair, there are some parts of this game that hold it back from being as fantastic as it could have been. All ships, avoid the Armada's fire. Aim for Oigany's flagship. Here we go! The story starts with a battle against what's left of Andros' forces. Pepe has retired from being a pilot, so Crystal has taken his place on the team. After the defeat of Andros' forces, new enemies called the Aperoids are revealed. They are these alien beings capable of taking over mechanical and organic matter in a parasitic way. So the Star Fox team must fly to different planets to try to put a stop to the Aperoid menace. This is a very sci-fi story that is more fleshed out than Star Fox 64's story, with a number of cutscenes included in the missions. Don't worry, they're skippable. I've made it inside. With the graphics, the game does have the burden of coming on the heels of the beautiful Star Fox adventures. That being said, its graphics for the ground missions are okay. Character models are decent, as are the environments, but the textures are rather bland. Space missions, however, are another story. The space levels look great. They are pretty looking levels that a fan would want from a Star Fox game. But without giving away spoilers, the Aperoid homeworld is one of the great looking ground levels, probably the best looking ground level in the game. There are a lot of conflicting opinions about Assault, but one thing that reviewers have agreed on was that this game does a fantastic job with its audio. There are cool sound effects in the game, not great, but still good. The voice acting though is much better in this game, especially with Star Wolf because he sounds much more like a badass evil rival to Fox McCloud instead of a cheesy villain with over the top dialogue. Even Slippy's voice isn't as annoying this time, but you will still curse his name every time he needs to be saved. Some things never change. I'm in trouble! Thanks Fox! I thought I was a goner! You haven't changed a bit, Rock Boy! Too true, Falco. Also, the voice acting makes the characters more relatable, so it's easier to take the story seriously. As for the music, Assault features fully orchestrated soundtracks, and they are AWESOME! Some of the tunes are orchestrated versions of Star Fox 64's tracks, and they actually sound much more epic because of the orchestration. I'm telling you, Star Fox games need more music like this. Nintendo, take notes on that for a Star Fox Wii U game. Seriously, it adds great epicness to this game. Keep your wits about you, everyone. No mercy! The gameplay in Assault gets a lot of undeserved hate from critics. For me, I only have five problems with the gameplay that I'll get to at different parts of this review. Not major problems, mostly missed opportunities, but worth mentioning anyway. And Nintendo, pay attention to these points, because if you make these improvements in a Star Fox Wii U game, along with what's already great about this game, you will make one hell of an awesome Star Fox game. Now there are very good action-packed flight shooter levels that any Star Fox fan would expect. It's really the ground missions that get the most hate. But actually, these levels are a lot of fun. Playing as Fox in walk mode in a single player mission shooting up bad guys for points feels like the right next step in Star Fox gameplay that the next Star Fox game should really keep and improve upon. Ground levels that you use blasters, machine guns, rocket launchers, sniper rifles, grenades, motion sensitive mines, so many different weapons to use. And with these weapons, you run around an open area blasting away targets marked on your radar and any bad guys that get in your way. Also in some of these levels, you can jump into an R-Wing or a Landmaster to give yourself an advantage in killing foes or to help your teammates who will sometimes be engaging in sky battles. Oh, and I did mention riding on the wing of an R-Wing blasting enemies on the ground with a full auto laser, right? That's f***ing awesome! This game needs more of those parts! But here's my first problem with the game. Problem 1. Ground Mission Variety Some have complained about ground missions feeling repetitive. For me, they're a lot of fun to play. 
but the developers could have made at least two or three ground missions that are more of the fight your way from point A to point B variety, just to mix up the action more. Problem 2. Repetitive Advice It's cool if your teammates give you advice on where to go to take out targets, but I wish they would give you a good 5 minutes before hounding you with advice they gave you 30 seconds ago. Either that, or a way to turn that kind of advice to only being said once. You must be able to get inside using the elevators. Now I have to address the controls, because I constantly hear reviewers complaining about this. They say the controls don't work, they're awkward, they kill the fun. In general, the ground missions don't control well, comments like that. The flight controls are what you would expect, except that doing a barrel roll is done with the L button, and some of the classic moves are done on different buttons, since it's a different controller. As for the ground missions, the controls work just fine when I play. Know why? Because I changed the controls from the default single stick scheme, which is awkward to control, to the dual analog control scheme. Once you do that, the game controls pretty much like a third person shooter. Move with the control stick, aim with the C stick, fire with R, jump with Y, and other buttons for actions specific to this game. However, this does bring up one small problem. Problem 3. Control Tightness Aiming with Fox on the ground can be a bit too fast, and the Landmaster controls take some getting used to. Helpful tip, treat it like you're controlling a tank in an FPS game, except it can move from side to side with thrusters. But these issues are very minor once you change to dual analog controls. If you play this game, I highly recommend you do that. Walking and tank controls will shift to dual analog, but the flight controls will stay the same, and in general, the game will control much better. Don't be misled by all these reviewers who have complained about the controls. K-Wing! IGN! GameSpot! ZGR Undertow! Yeah, Derek, I watched your review that felt like you were just complaining about the game. Be more open-minded, please. In total, there are 10 missions to play. You can replay a mission anytime to see how you do on a harder difficulty, or just to try to beat your high score. However, Problem 4. Game Length the replay value is great, but the game ends too soon. It could have been longer with more missions in order to increase replay value. If this game included connecting flight missions between each of the ground missions, plus point A to point B ground missions like I mentioned earlier, the replay value of this game would be a lot better. It's a missed opportunity by developers Namco, but that doesn't stop the game from being fun. Excellent work, Fox! Saria is saved! Star Fox Assault also includes a multiplayer mode, but I've heard the same thing about multiplayer in every review I've watched on this game. It's not as fun as Star Fox 64. It doesn't have lasting value. Are you kidding me? There's so much more to this multiplayer than Star Fox 64's multiplayer. You have various types of deathmatch modes, some of which you unlock as you play more matches, such as booster pack mode, that's jetpack for anyone who's confused, each player can choose one of six characters, including Star Wolf. Plus, there are even more weapons in multiplayer mode than in the single player levels. The guided missile launcher, cluster bombs, predator rockets, and more. There are a bunch of maps with way more detail than Star Fox 64's maps. In the ground maps, you can jump in and out of Landmasters and R-Wings, or Wolfens once unlocked. So you and up to three friends can blast away at each other in a variety of ways. So with all these maps, weapons, characters, and vehicles to mix up the multiplayer action, there's actually plenty of lasting appeal to this game's multiplayer. However, with the multiplayer there is my final problem slash missed opportunity with this game. Problem 5. No AI bots in multiplayer. With how much multiplayer has to offer, it's disappointing that you can't play it against 4, 8, or any bots. You can really only play it when friends are over. But when you do, it's a lot of fun, despite what critics have said. Nintendo, listen well when I say this. If you want to make Star Fox multiplayer on the Wii U really great, do it like this, but with tighter controls, AI bots, online modes, blue marine modes, and team deathmatch modes. Trust me, that would be the ideal Star Fox multiplayer experience. To wrap up, Star Fox Assault could have been better, but it's not as bad as reviewers have said. It's a great Star Fox game that takes a step in the right direction for the franchise. If you're a Star Fox fan like me, you should play this game for sure. 
don't worry about the negative reviews it's gotten, and just have fun with Star Fox Assault. Now let's get us a Star Fox Wii U game.